Hey, well, I'm Tony. And I'm Chantel. And welcome to the Tony, Tony and Chantel Show. show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. Thank y'all for having me on. No, no problem. problem. No problem. Now, Rodney, what I wanted to ask you is, uh, when did you realize you wanted to do comedy as, comedy as a profession? Well, I, I was uh, I was in jail for about six weeks, and that's when I realized. No, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I man, I think comics are born. I had a teacher that used to let me tell jokes at the end of the day if I would shut up throughout the course of the day in class, right? Uh, that, yeah. And that was in second grade. But I, I would I wouldn't find it as a profession much later on. I think I was um. I mean, probably I was actually pretty young. I mean, I was I was still in high school when I knew what I wanted to do, but um, uh, it, it wasn't real for me till probably the mid '90s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to know is what were some of your um childhood influences in um in comedy and stuff like? Well, like, who did you growing up and stuff like that? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, you, 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 we influenced by a lot of different things, you know, everywhere from like, my, you know, my uncle who was a funny guy, you know, he still, yeah. he still laugh at his own jokes to this day, <laughs> and uh, you know, or my mom who's a, who's a riot herself, um, but it, it mm-hmm. was Eddie Murphy for me when I saw Eddie Murphy on Saturday night Saturday Night Live, that was it for me, man. I was like, yo, that's that's it, you know. Yeah. I didn't know it as a profession until then. Okay. Yeah. Now, Rodney, you are co-hosted on the Monique show, right? I did. Okay. Now, can you do you know what happened with it being canceled? Well, I mean, it's it's a trip because people use that word cancel. I mean, I mean, to this day, we have, we not on the air, but nobody ever canceled us. Nobody ever said, "Hey." Y'all don't come back next week. You know, you okay. know, the call I got was that we were being put on indefinite hiatus. Now, uh, of course, you know, two years later, that's probably canceled. <laughs> right. But um, it's uh, generally, it's one of those things that, you know, just kind of happened. You know, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Monique, you know, allowed me to roll with her on that. And, and BT was, you know, good to us. And, you know, sometimes things end. It's like a relationship. You know, you don't get a reason why all the time. It's just it's just over, you know. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Another question? Okay. Now um not only did you co host the Monique show, but you co host the Bill Bellamy's Who's Got Jokes. Yeah. You co host the off the chain and all this different other stuff. How do you how do you continue to keep going and doing these you know, jobs like this. Man, I got I got these babies to feed, man. I got a, <laughs> okay. you know, I got six kids, so you know, I don't have a choice whether I'm gonna work or not. You know, I, this is the thing. Okay. I'm a stand up comic first. You know, I, I tell jokes. I travel around the country. I'll be getting on the plane tomorrow uh, to go and and tell jokes this weekend. So that's my bread and butter. But what I learned fairly early on is, if you're gonna entertain people of color. They need yeah. they need to be there seeing you on something, you know. <laughs> Black people don't just go see people. They they got they see people they seen on the movie or they seen on TV. And so once I realized that, I made it my business to 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 learn television, to learn you know uh, uh, movies. And and I mean I was very deliberate in the pathway that I took. Like like I had an opportunity um, uh, as a comedian to perform on a show. And actually, Monique was the host of the show. It's called Big Black Comedy Show. All so right. they, they offered me to do, do a set, do, do like my comedy on the show. And I was like, you know, I really want to do something else. What else can I do? And I took a job making lesser money on the show, but I was interviewing all the comedians. And that, okay. that me making that choice led to the producers considering me as the host of that show, which okay. later on, uh, those those guys produced a show called Who's Got Jokes. So it all kind of it all kind of worked together. If that make any sense? Did you just dig in your nose? Oh no, no, because I do it. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I just. 
What up? Okay, you say you do stand up. You know, we that's what you know. A lot of us watch you from from the Comic View and you know and stuff like that and stuff. Um, and then we see you in movies and yeah. stuff. I want to know what what are some of your favorite places to perform? Like you know. Oh yeah, uh, I, I love Chicago. That's my hometown. You know, okay. um, you know. Anytime I get to go back to LA, that's fun because I lived there for twelve years. Uh, okay. You know, any place that got comedians, I mean, got got okay. people that's ready to laugh. That's my yeah. favorite place to perform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how different? How different from um, movie comedy and stand up comedy for you? How different is that? Oh, it's, it's 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 way different. But but you know, when you're a good stand up, people are hired yeah. to be funny. Like okay. people, you know, when I when I'm doing a movie, you know, a lot of times a director come to me and go, "Hey, you're right." He look around, and like, "Hey, you do your thing," <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> and so a lot of times I have a lot of freedom to do what I do comedically inside of a movie situation. And so, yeah. like, I did a film with Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey called The Johnson Family Vacation. And yeah, yeah. In, in that movie, man, you know, I mean, I'm working with Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, great comedians. And uh, I had a scene in a movie where I was supposed to give the award to one of the families. And yeah. a girl walks past and I go, you know, is she family? Well, <laughs> you know, I improvised that line. But then yeah. I messed up the real line I was supposed to say afterwards. I was like, man, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's like, no, that was good. Do that again. So <laughs> they you you just you you kind of learn how to be funny in the space of an actor. But I took acting classes too, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I respect okay. the uh I respect the discipline of acting. You can't okay. just be willy nilly talking about your actor and you yeah. know and you can't act. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah. Now speaking of movies, how did you get your uh part in Medea's Big Happy Family? Oh, great question. I, I was doing stand up at a, a comedy club here in Atlanta and um a friend of mine was uh helping Roger Bob who who was the at that time was the right hand man for Mr. Tyler Perry. And so Roger Bob came down to see me. And they had been trying to cast the role of Harold for quite some time, like some months. And right. so they had saw everybody in Hollywood, and it just nobody was right for the role. So he came down to see me on what I, I think was a, a a Thursday. He saw me on a Thursday. He he after the show he came to me and said, "Right now I'm gonna give you a call tomorrow." I I'm like, whatever, he ain't gonna call me. <laughs> the next day, he called. He was like, yo, man, uh, we want you to come in and read for this role. And I was like, okay. So I went in. I read for it. And, uh, like, I didn't hear anything Friday. No sooner than I said that, the phone rang. It was Tyler Perry Studios. And they told me I booked the role of Harold on uh, Johnson Family Vacation. I mean, on uh, on uh, Medea's Big Happy Family. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Now, when you when you started comedy, did you come in with a goal? When I started comedy, yeah, your stand up. I mean, I I had a goal. I had a goal. My goal was just to be funny, you know. I mean, I didn't, you know, I I didn't, you know, it, it wasn't about television and film back then. It was it was just yeah. about, you know, being funny, and you know, I developed the, the other aspirations later, if that makes right. sense. Okay. Okay. Not being in this, being in this business, you know, um, comedy has kind of like died down. You know, I know a lot of people do stand up, but you know, we used to have like Comedy View every week, and mm -hmm. you know, it's still out there. So, what what do you think has changed in the well, business? What you, well, what have you learned? Well, this, you know, this is the thing, I, and you know, I, I don't know if comedy has died down, but I'll say this: the audience is way more savvy. Like okay. you got to think when when Def Jam yeah. came out, people had never seen comedy that way. Yeah, right, right. yeah, you know, yeah. When, when Comic View, when Cedric the Entertainer and D.L. Yeah. Hughley was hosting Comic View, yeah, um, uh, people had never seen that before. You know, black comedy was very yeah. new to to all of us. So um, it, it's just it's a situation now. You got twenty four hours of comedy. You got um, comedy in um, on Comedy Central. You got yeah. uh, 
uh, in your car. You got twenty-four. You got three or four different satellite channels of all comedy. So yeah. you, as an audience, are consuming comedy differently. So we got the internet. Yeah. We got Facebook. You got Twitter. So it's just a different world. Yeah. That because a lot more to be entertained. So you, okay. as a comedian, you have to evolve and, and understand that to, to be able to yeah. be relevant into the future. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, what advice would you give a um a person that's starting out in this business and wanna you know do stand up and stuff like that? Wanna be wanna do that job as a comedian? Uh, I, I'll give two pieces of advice. The first piece of advice is this: uh, be prepared to work hard. A lot of people get into this business and they just wanna um they think this is a you know it didn't they they college career didn't work out and now they want to tell jokes. You know. Yeah. This is not. And um, so if you come in here for those reasons, you're probably going to be disappointed. And uh, beyond that, I tell people all the time, don't quit. The only way you lose in any profession is to quit. You know, so if you don't quit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now when you, at every show that you do, once you leave the show, do you feel like you've done your job? I look at it like this. I'm trying to make people laugh. And, and my bigger purpose is, you know, people got all kind of stuff on them nowadays. The economy is bad. Um, yeah. You know, people come to a comedy show. They come with their bills on them, their baby mama to talk about them. They, yeah. They're they going through it. So if yeah. I can help them depart from that for a few minutes, then absolutely I've done my job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I would say that you you have been in this business long enough to understand the ins and the outs, you know, the ups and downs, you know, like you said, it's not something to play with. You know, a lot of us we we see the, the rewards, but we don't see the struggle and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would say I, a, a question I usually tell everybody, I always ask, what would Rodney today tell Rodney first starting off in this business? Like, what would you tell yourself? Wow, that's a great question. That is the absolute. That's a really good question. What what would I tell young twenty? 20 something yeah. year old Rodney um, uh, I, I would tell him to, 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 to be prepared for the long haul uh, yeah. I would tell him to get on MySpace earlier <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him not to stop doing those viral videos I was doing viral videos before all of these cats and I, it, it just got boring to me and I was like this is stupid this is never going to catch on and now people are <laughs> making careers out of it so yeah. I would have told that young dude, man, when you start making those videos, to keep going, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I would have started producing earlier, I would have started, okay. like, now I have a mind to produce and create, and okay. I think that's another secret to this game, is you got to create beyond yourself, you okay. know, I got to not only create jobs for Rodney Perry, but I got to create jobs for my peers. All right. Okay. okay. Um, I think you were oh. you were talking, you were finishing the question. Um, we cut out, got cut off about um producing. Uh, well, well you know, I I have a mind to produce now. You know, and the okay. thing about thing about producing is you not only create a job for yourself, but you create and work and a job for other people that look like you, and that's that's really okay. what it's all about. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, do you feel that you all, through all these years working with so many great people that have came before you in comedy? Mm -hmm. And people that came after you, do you feel like you've held your own as a comedian with the new and the old? Uh, I mean, I, I think so. I mean, you learn something from everybody. You know, I mean, I, uh, George Lopez, who who was one of the first guys to take me on the road, you know, he showed how to be, be a writer. He would write, he would sit down and, and tweak his set. And I always thought that was interesting. Or, or, or say the entertainer who was awesome with people. He treat every, every person he came to, he come into contact with, he treat like a family member. And I thought right. that was awesome, you know, and then Steve Harvey is the ultimate consummate businessman. And, you know, he always treated yeah. me like business. So, uh, yeah. so I, I learned a little bit from everybody that I, that I had opportunity to work with. And then some people you never heard of, a guy named Tony Royster, a comedian, who told me, man, why you on stage with all that stuff in your pockets? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So everybody's got something for you to give. I think I've held my own. And the thing about goals and achieving goals is every goal opens you up for another goal. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah.
Now, after you, after you started comedy later on in your career, did you ever think about quitting or giving up? I've only quit once, and <laughs> and and I'll tell you, like uh, I started comedy really like in my high school year, and okay. and then you know real life happened. I had uh, I had a, I was I was 19 years old, had a daughter on the way, and because of that, I joined the Navy. And so I went through boot camp and all that good stuff. And, and when I got to my first duty station, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to try this comedy. So I was stationed in New Orleans. I went to a gong show and got gong. I'm talking about <laughs> they ran me. They gonged me so hard. They was looking at me after the gong, asked me why I was still there. And it was it was such a traumatic experience. I, I said, you know what? I said, maybe this ain't for me. And I, and I, and I, and I walked out of there that day. And I and I quit, and I that's the only time I stopped doing comedy, and I stopped probably for about two weeks, and <laughs> and I met uh, uh, my best friend who is still my best friend to this day, a guy by the name of Harry Ratchford, and Harry Harry was so funny to me, you know, just as a human being, I was like, this dude is funny, and I was like, dude, man, you should try stand up, you know, he's like, man, I ain't yeah. doing stand up, I said, man, you should try it, I used to do it, and he was like, well, if I do it, you do it with me. And he and I became a comedy team, and that got me back into it. He uh, subsequently, you know, it wasn't for him. He wasn't a comic, but he's really, yeah. he's a great comedy writer, and he still writes. He writes for Kevin Hart right now. And um, okay. and so Harry kind of got me back in, and, and I, I, I've never stopped again since then. Okay. So I quit for like two weeks, and then I got back in. <laughs> well, this is a fun question I always ask um, the comedians. Um, when you do your stand up and stuff and all that junk, do you, how do you handle hecklers? Because you know you have those people come to your job want to mess with you and stuff. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Any heckler, y'all watch this video. If you want to be famous, that's what you do. You heckle Rodney Perry. Because I will make <laughs> your ass famous. Okay? <laughs> You know, because this is the thing. Sometimes hecklers mean well. They think they helping you. Hey, I'm going to say yeah, this. Yeah. I'm going to say this because I'm going to help him. You ain't helping me. I'm a professional, okay? I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing it. So, um, you know, but at the same time, I don't attack people. Like some yeah. comics, some comics, that's part of their show is just to attack somebody. I don't really do that because yeah. I think people spend their hard-earned money. And the last thing they want to, you know, be is talked about. So, you know, there's a fine line between having fun with somebody and having fun at somebody's expense. And I, and I try I try never to have fun at somebody's expense if I can help it, you know, you know, because people, people will shoot you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you talk, He's talk hard about, time. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. And then, and you got to watch what you say because words are very powerful. I had this dude come up to me. I was living in Inglewood, California, right? You know, Inglewood. Yeah. So I was living in Inglewood. <laughs> And this dude rolled up on me like, and you know, it was that time of the day. It was like in the evening. It was kind of the sun was, but it wasn't dark yet. And he was like, hey, okay. hey, ain't you that comic? Ain't you Rodney Perry? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I thought somebody recognized me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was funny. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah. One day you was talking about my girl titties. I was like, huh? <laughs> like, whoa. And then, and then I had to, re I realized something. Like, it's something that I say up again but people walk out of there and they carry that and uh i talked to your ass and i was scared he was gonna shoot me because i couldn't see his hand you know yeah and i don't, I don't know how that made him feel that day and uh so i just i just explained to him i said half the time i can't even see people in the audience bro you know and that's really the truth if you're on stage and lights in your face you you have stuff you say mm -hmm. arbitrarily that sometimes you can't even see people you're talking about <laughs> You just go off, yeah. You just make them pay. <laughs> <laughs> so what what other projects do you have like coming up? I say I heard you say you're doing all the producing and stuff, and you uh -huh. you know movies and acting. Well, well, you you guys you guys mentioned my show. I got a show on Bounce TV called Off the Chain. I'm actually the, the yeah show, stand up comedy show. It'll debut yeah. season two at the beginning of uh, January 2014. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm developing a game show right now. Um, called uh, Make Up or Break Up, brand new game show about to hit the streets. It's crazy, hilarious. It's funny, <laughs> uh, you know. And uh, outside of that, you know, it's some stuff that I ain't ready to talk about yet. You know, one thing yeah. I 
businesses, you shouldn't talk about stuff too early because you know you yeah. gotta right. kind of activate your haters. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what what type of television is top, is um um you watching? Uh, you know I, I like TVs I, and stuff like that and stuff. I like Scandal now. Uh, okay. Oh. So uh, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I, I heard that uh, 24 might come back. I'm a big, okay. Jack, I'm a big Jack Bauer fan. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my my daughter had me watching Revolution, which I think is a real interesting show. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't I don't have a lot of must haves, but you know what? I end up watching Chopped. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I I will watch a marathon of Chopped. Yeah. I mean, and then. I be trying. I be telling my wife, "Let's go put some in the basket. See if we can make something." You know. <laughs> so yeah, I, I be trying to make. I, I be trying to get my cook on sometimes. So I like those those home home improvement shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh Lord. So yeah. what did what did your family think about you know your comedy? And do you tell jokes about them that they be mad at? Mad <laughs> yeah, on, on some level, you know. Um, what what happens is what what I decided very early on is I wouldn't let my family dictate yeah. uh, what I would say. But I have a you know I have a, a respect. You know, my mom done told me you leave me out of your damn job. You know? <laughs> uh, but at the same time, like you know, th- my my family kind of gets it. Like my daughters, yeah. they see people see me before I do. They they looking at you, daddy. They want to they want to talk to you. I'm like really. <laughs> Like this one right here, looking talking to me right now. Say hi. <laughs> hi. You got a big jaw, applesauce. Now, so I, I'm getting my daddy on. I'm always daddy first. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Go in the house. <laughs> <laughs> don't nobody listen to me. Close mm-hmm. the door. Close, don't come out here. Close the door. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to give him that look. <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be right back, too. That's the sad part. Yeah, that's how they all are. Right back. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you have any charities that you um a part of, or that you would in the future may want to build, or something like that? I'm I'm um I'm actually you know constantly doing charity work. I do I yeah. hold events, and um there's a there's a school called St. Phillips in Dallas, Texas. You know that I, I've been working with them for a few years, and I'm looking to uh, start my own charity. Uh, a mentoring charity uh, that, that you know, I think, you know, mentoring has kind of gotten a bad rap, you know, with, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, people taking advantage of the youth. And uh, I'm not I'm not about that. So, you know, that that's one of the things I believe that we got to take some time out and, and give back and, and help yeah. right, right. to be productive. And, you know, we got some. Yeah. Why not give it to them? Yeah. Okay. You have anything else you do? I think that's it. Okay, well, that's all we have. Thank you for taking time out to. How old are y'all? Well, I'm 30. And I'm 17. 17. Okay, I thought y'all was dating. Y'all look like a couple. (laughs) (laughs) No, we cousins. It's just my little cousin. (laughs) That's all right, man. I'm I'm really happy to come on your show. Uh, I, I love the fact that now do y'all record the video? How do y'all do it? Yeah, yeah. We, we we record it and um we're edit and record it all nice and put it on like YouTube. It's like a YouTube show that you know we do like you know interview comments or anybody that you know we want to show love to and put out there and you know to our audience or anybody we can and stuff like that. And you know we talk about the reality TV politics whatever and stuff like that. Just some um, you know to do and, and stuff like that and give like you guys opportunity to sort of put y'all stuff out there. Because if, if you we can reach, if we can reach love anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a show called Rodney Perry Live that I've been doing for the past, hey. like, five years. And yeah. I, I think this medium is incredible. You know, you, yeah. got, you got access to your fans that we didn't have a decade ago. Exactly. So yeah. it, it's awesome. So well done, guys. Well done. Thank you, Tony Thank and Tail. You. The Tony and Tail <laughs> Show. <laughs> And we from Miami. You from Chicago? Are you gonna come down here soon, like in Miami, do some shows? Uh, I am. I am. Go- I am. Hopefully, we coming down to Miami real soon, and uh, we'll okay. connect in. Maybe we can do a live joint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just let us know. Just let us know. And thank you so much again. We're gonna let you get back to your beautiful daughter. <laughs> she, she look at. She, she look at. Look at. What's she, what's, what's she doing? So disrespectful. All right. Let me, let, let me go see what she wants. She wants some applesauce. I got to go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.